You have seen the manner in which a gun turret withstands aerial bombing. This certainly shows that the battleship is far from becoming obsolete. In spite of new forms of aerial attack, the battleship still performs a valuable function in both offense and defense. To damage a battleship, the attacking planes must hit a very small target while flying at high speed, probably in the teeth of a hail of anti-aircraft gunfire. Bombs must be dropped close alongside the ship and timed to explode underwater, a difficult thing to accomplish. An aerial bomb making a direct hit on the battleship gun turret does practically no damage. This structure is one of the strongest parts of the battleship, not only because it is so heavily armored, but because of its engineering design as well. The problem of turret design is one of enclosing a given space with the greatest protection and the least weight. Because the turret is subject to attack from any angle, we must have four strong sides. In the old days, when battles were fought at distances of less than 10,000 yards, and when there were no airplanes to drop bombs, the sides of a turret alone were enough. That's all they needed to protect the old forts. But today we must guard battleships against shells from 30,000 yards and over. And against enemy airplanes. So we must put a strong top on the turret. We need a cover, not only to protect against direct hits, but also to strengthen the entire turret. A box-like structure with only four sides has little strength, but by adding a top and a bottom, we increase its strength as a unit and the strength of the sides as well. A flat top, such as we have here, is not as strong weight for weight as we should like. So we take a tip from the builders in other lines. When Mother Nature makes a natural bridge, she isn't trying to get the strongest construction. But sometimes she does build a perfect arch. And that's something man has been imitating for thousands of years. When man first started to build arches, he leaned two stones together like this. But as man's skill increased, he learned to build curved arches. The arch has always appealed to builders because of its beauty and because of its practical value. Today, as in ancient times, the arch is widely used for decoration in beautiful buildings and where great strength is required. Up to this point, we have considered the arch only as a way to support weight over two points. But if we spin an arch like this, we have a special kind of arch, which we call a dome. The dome covers an area instead of two points. The dome is extremely useful in architecture, when a large area must be covered and protected, and when striking beauty is desired. All over this round world, the strongest and most beautiful structures have their finest expression in the dome. In our turret, we utilize the principle of the dome when we put on the rounded top to strengthen the four sides. Any blows on the top are now transferred to the sides, and the strength of the entire structure increased. Also, we achieve greater strength in the corners by rounding them. As a result of this design, the turret is almost invulnerable. In all probability, it will withstand far more violent attacks than it will ever meet in service. Of course, an automobile is not a gun turret, and the motorist is not a gunner's mate. But when automobile engineers design a body for a modern motor car, they're up against some of the same problems that are nightmares to the gun turret designer. He's concerned about protection against severe shocks and strains, and so are they. The difference 
is that automobile engineers want to protect drivers and passengers rather than the armament of a gun turret. In the up-to-date motor car, the sides, top, and the bottom are all tied together for strength and rigidity, and the top is rounded in a solid steel dome-like construction just like a modern gun turret. This gives greater strength at every point. Any strain on the top is distributed evenly over the entire body. This solid steel safety has been made possible by modern manufacturing methods and up-to-date equipment. The largest and most powerful presses in the world shape this new top. Giant machines weld the top, the sides, and the bottom into one strong, solid unit. Then the inside is covered with heavy insulation. This not only gives protection against heat and cold, but it also soundproofs the body. But not all automobile bodies are built like this. Until very recently, body construction hadn't changed much from the days when Granddad went to courting in the old horse-drawn buggy. To make a top for one of these old buggies, you stretched a cloth canopy over some slats. The detachable weatherproof curtains came later, and everybody thought they would solve the problem, but they didn't. We have come a long way since the days when a buggy was the last word in transportation, but the tops of even modern cars have, until just recently, remained pretty much the same. Roofs were of fabric, supported on slats, or even on wire mesh screen. But now, that is all past history. The solid steel turret top has solved all these problems and has brought a lot of other advantages too. Now we have steel at the top and bottom too. One single seamless unit that provides the greatest beauty, strength and safety in the turret top body of your new car. Now, let's look at an actual experience that shows how the turret top in your car stands up under a bombardment in peacetime driving. Captain Bob Ward one of the greatest death-defying stunt drivers ever to sit behind the wheel of an automobile has such complete confidence in the engineering principles of solid steel construction and dome design that he is about to perform a feat never before accomplished or even attempted by anyone, anywhere. Take it away, Captain. Okay, boys. Thanks a lot. <laughs>